Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This lesson is on piece number three out of my series called Seven Easy Classical Guitar Songs for Beginners. This series is an introduction to classical guitar by teaching actual pieces of music, very simple beginner level pieces, and by giving you step-by-step -step exercises for how to work on them from the ground up. To get the most out of this, I encourage you to start from part one. There's a link in the description to a playlist of all the videos in this series. Each piece in this series features a different technique, training, and element of expression needed to bring the music alive, which you can then apply to any other piece of music. I also will do a harmonic analysis of all the pieces in this series. If you're wanting an introduction to classical guitar with some easy, playable, and enjoyable pieces to walk away with, then you're in the right place. You can download the sheet music and classical guitar tabs for all the pieces in this series for free. They're inside my solo guitar arrangement pack. Just click on the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get my arrangement pack for free. In this lesson, I'll teach you the third piece out of seven in this series, and we will talk about how to take advantage of muting bass notes, muting open strings that are ringing when we don't want them to ring. This is an important technique and kind of difficult, and that will help our music sound cleaner and clearer and help us be more expressive. Let's get into it. First, I'll perform the piece so you just hear it in its entirety and hear a demonstration of what it sounds like. Then we'll talk about some information that we need to know about the sheet music. Then we'll work on our exercises for how to play it from the ground up. In this piece, we just have three exercises because it's a very simple piece. And then our element of expression for this lesson is muting bass notes, and that's going to be where the hard stuff comes in. That's where they're going to be the valuable part of this lesson. Very difficult technique, but really important, and you'll see why. I'll give you a little bonus tip on, a, on an alternate way to mute bass notes. There are two ways, so I'll give you a second way that's uh, sometimes more ideal, sometimes less ideal. Then we'll do a harmonic analysis to see what are the chords that are being used in this piece, and at the very end I'll give you a slow demonstration meant for you to practice along with, because it's great to have a goal, something to shoot for, and so I'll do a play-along slow playthrough at the end that you can come back to and work towards. Just a reminder, you can get the sheet music for free in my solo guitar arrangement pack. Just use the link in the top of the description to get that. This piece is Siciliano by Matteo Carcassi from the late classical early romantic era. Matteo Carcassi was a famous guitarist in the heyday of classical guitar, kind of at the, at the late classical era, and he has many, many studies and etudes that are still being practiced regularly today by students everywhere. So here is a demonstration of this piece, Siciliano by Matteo Carcassi. Okay, let's look at the sheet music here for a couple things before we go through exercises. This is in 3-4 time, so this is 3 beats per measure, and each of those beats is a quarter note. So you can count the beats 1, 2, 3, and you can see and feel that it lines up that way. Here we go, 1, 2, 3 quarter notes right there. And so it has kind of what people think of as a waltz time feel. Another thing I want you to notice is the stem directions, up stem, down stem, so that is usually an indicator of separate voices and separate lines. So we have the bass line and the melody line. In this piece, we don't have an inner line. An earlier piece in the series, we had also harmony in the middle, but this has two things going on. It's really nice that the stems show us that they are separated like that in guitar music. I uh, also want to point out that there are no fingerings on this piece, no suggested fingering. So that is part of learning a piece when there aren't any is that you kind of decide for yourself, figure it out, write them down, um, think of things, test it out. That's really one of the best ways to learn. What if you use this finger? What if you use that finger? And kind of solve for yourself the best way to do it. Just to make sure we're aware of this, this is a tie. So once you play this D note here, it rings for two measures. You don't replay it right here. That's everything that I wanted to talk about with the sheet music. So let's move on to our exercises and actually play this. There are just a few exercises before we're just going to get used to playing the whole thing and then we're going to work on the difficulty of muting open string bass notes. The first thing I want us to do, we did in one of the earlier pieces and we want to review the scale of the melody. Like what scale, what note collection is the scale? of the melody coming from. So it is an A harmonic minor scale if you just play it as a scale. We have G sharp as the lowest note right here, and we can find that in the sheet music 
right here, for example, then A next, then B, then C, and then we have a D over here, we have an E, and we have an F here. So if you put all those together as a scale, and I just want us to go up and down that scale as an exercise. said it previously that this can be a great way to internalize the sound of the piece of music and get our fingers down getting comfortable with just the collection of notes that the melody is coming from even though it's going to feel very different playing the actual piece of music I like to do that quite a bit kind of find the source of things and make sure I know that so that's the first thing that I want us to do there the next exercise is to just play the melody by itself and that's always a great thing to do. Let's go ahead and do that. So be able to play the melody totally by itself. Chunk it together if you want. Do two measures at a time, four measures at a time. Kind of piece it together like you would. Always a great idea before adding everything else. Let's review the bass part. I wouldn't say you have to play the bass part by itself in time, but just kind of review where it goes. Okay, we have open A, open A, then open D. Okay, then open E, open E, open A, open A, open A, open A, open D. So that's kind of nice to review that. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, okay, that's helpful to review. And now we're going to jump in and try to piece it all together. And I want you to do this ideally two to four measures at a time, chunks of measures at a time. So if you were doing, say, four measures at a time, do it smaller chunks if you want. You could even start with one, but here's my strategy for this when in doubt. Make sure you can play, we won't count this as a pickup measure. So these four measures, I'm taking this big chunk, but do two if you need to. I'm gonna be able to play these four and then these four and then these eight okay then you do these four these four and then these eight um, and any kind of other baby steps in between you have to decide that for yourself you are your own best teacher you need to see the the red flags for yourself as you play the things that are needed and go and solve those problems but this is a great way especially if a piece is a little harder and more complex chunk it together so let's do the first four bars What I would do is make sure I can do that without a mistake three times in a row and then say, cool, I did that three times in a row. And then I would go on to the next one. Okay, same thing. And then you would piece it together and any kind of version of that. So you're not just starting at the beginning all the time, playing through, not recognizing mistakes and just you know, kind of hacking your way through, you want to try to get those three times in a row on small chunks. So then the mistakes are really clear. We kind of want a punishment for the mistakes. We have to stop, start over, get three in a row. It'll be the one of the best things you can do for your practicing. Uh, it makes you recognize when there are mistakes. So that'll help you piece it all together. I'll play the slow demonstration soon. Let's talk about the really important, difficult musicianship training in this lesson, which is muting bass notes. This is so essential but it's also relatively advanced. So if you are going through, say, a, a method book series of classical guitar, it might not be till you work all the way through volume one and it takes you a year and then midway through the second volume of the classical series, it'll say, hey, by the way, when this A is ringing and you play this D, you want to mute this so it doesn't keep ringing over the other one. Or when this E comes in, you want to mute the previous open D. So this is so tricky because these are these beautiful open strings that we get to use to support our playing. But if that D just keeps ringing, it's kind of washy sounding. And sometimes it sounds better than others depending on the notes and the context and everything like that. But if we, but we need to come to terms with the concept of muting open string bass notes um, and try to start grappling with it a little bit and try to start doing it here and there where we can. But do keep in mind that it is really tricky in purely a coordination sense. 
and it, it's usually introduced later in methods. I like to introduce it earlier because it is simply coordination. I would say it's simply a tedious thing. Um, there's nothing, you, there's nothing uh, athletic about it. It's not like extreme technique or anything. It's just coordination. It's not strength or flexibility. It's just, I need to remember, you know, know the music enough and while I'm playing, go mute it with my thumb. So here's the default way to do it. I'm gonna start at the top. Okay, so I played that third measure there, the F and the D, and then my thumb hopped over to the A right as I was playing. I'll keep playing this time so you see it. Here comes the next one. Ah, I played this D and the E, and I hopped over and played that. Now you might say, well, why, why mute that D? Because you're playing a D on the top, these are the same note. It's just, to my ear at least, letting it ring through does not sound intentional, it doesn't sound clean. If you like it, absolutely fine. You can let it ring. And for a long time, I never muted any bass notes for a long time, and a lot of people don't. So do it, to, just be aware of it and find your own taste and find your own decision on when you wanna tackle that or not. So if I'm going from measure five, Okay, so I went A and then muted the E like that. I'll do it one more time. Watch my thumb. Mute. 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 Okay, so you're aware of it now. Watching me do it will make it seem easier than it is. I promise you it wasn't easy for me. And in new pieces, and even simple pieces, I have to really work on that quite a bit as a phase of my practice. Oh, I wanna get that mute clean. It's a whole other movement, and you were stopping a sound instead of making a sound. Um, but it's, in to my ear and to my taste, it cleans it up quite a bit. It feels like I'm in so much more control, and I really recommend trying it out on this piece in particular, at least in one of the spots. That is the default way to mute bass strings. Here's an alternate way as just kind of your bonus tip that I would recommend being familiar with, but don't get too comfortable with because it only works if you're muting a bass note that is below. So for example, right at the top, if I go to play this D note and I need to mute A, you could do it with the side of your thumb simply like this. You, you angle it a little and you just mute it with the side of your thumb. If I get to this measure five and D was ringing from before, I cannot mute that way. So I have to do the hop method. That's why it's dangerous to get too used to this. It's not really dangerous to get too used to it, but it's dangerous to rely on it so much that we're not comfortable doing the other version. But if the note is below, when you're playing A and muting E, then that's a great way to do it. It might compromise the tone a little bit if you change your angle and it's not right where you want it to pluck it, but it's a great way to do it for a long time. I was muting bass notes only that way and not the other way, so at least you get some of them. So it's better than nothing if you do want to do that and kind of work on the harder version, which is the, the main one I showed you is kind of a harder version and you're welcome to you know, save that for later if you want to. So that's your other way of muting bass notes. Let's do an analysis of this piece, harmonic analysis, and just kind of phrasing analysis. I want you to just phrasing wise, look at how this is da, 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 da. And then the same idea from a different harmonic place. Da, 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 da. Same idea again off the next chord. Da, 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 da. And then same rhythm. Ba, 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 ba. Kind of ends a little differently very beautifully composed this should be an influence on us if you're someone that writes melodies writes songs or improvises in any genre this is such a simple example of a beautifully constructed melody because it's talking to itself it's reacting to itself it has a theme it has a motif da 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 okay ba, da 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 so wonderful. So if we can make our own music that way when we're improvising or or composing or whatever, simple is fine. Is Does it make sense? Does it say something? Does it respond to itself? Does it repeat a rhythmic idea? And does it walk through harmonies? We'll talk about the harmonies in one second. So um, 
that's something to take note of with this. Uh, also, duh, 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 the second line starting on, or the second half starting on measure nine. We have the exact same thing, this whole thing, and then the exact same thing again that ends slightly differently. That's fantastic. It's just one big statement, same statement with a slightly different end. That's another way to get some influence from the phrasing here. Let's look at the harmony for a second. Uh, measure one, da, 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 measure two, da, da, da. that's just A minor. Okay. Da, 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 da. If you watch the other videos in this series, we had this chord, which sounds like a D minor six, kind of feels like it if you're familiar with that. But it's actually B half diminished first inversion. This is a two chord of the key. We have the one chord of the key, two chord of the key. Next measure, measure five is E7. Da, da, da. Measure six is E7. Da, da, da. Okay. That's E7. And then back to A minor. So we have one, two, five, one. Okay. Classical music, jazz harmony, popular music is all using so much of the same functional harmony. It's great to point that out. Just a basic A minor, B half diminished, E7, back to A minor, but composed with each individual line being its own voice in that classical fashion. So that is the harmony of this piece. A minor, B half diminished first inversion, E7, A minor. Happens twice in a row. That's the harmonic analysis of this piece. I'll do the slow demonstration next. Before I do that, just a reminder, you can get this sheet music and every piece of music in this whole series and more in my solo guitar arrangement pack. That's totally free. You can use the link in the top of the description to get it, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon. Okay, here's the slow demonstration for you to work towards playing along with. Let's do this together. I'll count it off and you come in on, I'll count one, two, three, one, two, and then on that last three, you come in with me and we play together. One, two, three, one, two. That's it for this lesson. I post a new lesson video every week. Hope to see you in another lesson soon. Hope to see you in more lessons in this series. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.